In this video, we're going to learn how to create this animated graffiti effect using Adobe After Effects and Video Copilot's Element 3D. In order to follow along, you're going to need two things. First is Lockdown. Lockdown is a paid plugin which tracks your footage and creates a stabilized field so you can literally drag and drop anything you want, fully tracked. Very cool plugin, also a little expensive. Lucky for us, you don't need it if you can't afford it. You can either use the built-in After Effects tracker or Boris Mocha to get similar results. Next is Adobe Mixamo. Adobe Mixamo is a 3D animation database. What really makes Mixamo special is that it allows you to auto-rig your own 3D model to any of the animations on the site. This way you can use custom 3D model animations without actually doing any of the rigging yourself. Huge time saver. Let's begin. Okay, so our journey starts here in After Effects. And the first thing what you're gonna do is grab the lockdown plugin and lock down. Click pop out. And we're gonna start by holding control and just getting a couple of points. And mind you, make this as wide as possible because anything within the range is going to be your work area. Once you've created enough points, go down here and press track all. And wait for it to render. Once your track is done, quickly scrub through it, see if anything is amiss. All right, so something that I forgot. So it looks like over here, he decides to go haywire. So let's just quickly fix that. So go up here and set the interpolation to position, scale, rotate. Let it track again. As you can see now, my guy stays tracked because he's reading the uh, the other points. So, once you're uh, happy with your points, click Auto -triang Triangulate. Okay, looks good. So now we can press the X, close this out, and lock down. So that's our field. He creates a background. This is the layer that is gonna show our uh, our animation. And if we go in here, we can see our stabilized track. This is where we're gonna drop our assets. Speaking of which, let's go grab our astronaut. So, so I grabbed this one from the Production Crate website. Uh, he is rigged, but we won't need his rig. Uh, I downloaded him as an, uh, as an FBX file. And then over here in Mixamo, we're gonna upload our character. All right, nice. So let's let's find him something cool to do. So how about levitation? Hmm. Be, be, Richie. Nice. This will work just fine. Once you're happy with your result, you can download as an FBX. Once that's finished downloading, you can exit out of Mixamo. All right, back in Adobe After Effects, we're gonna create a new solid, name it element. And drag it on top. So, now we have to get our astronaut into element. Unfortunately, element doesn't know how to read FBX. So first, we need to convert our FBX file into an OBJ. You can use pretty much any uh, 3D program to do this. I use Blender. Go down to import, FBX, find your file. Make sure that animation is checked when you do this. Click import. All right, here's our guy. Let's quickly scrub through this animation, see what we got. So now with our guy, we're going to export it to Wavefront OBJ. Typically just in the same folder. Again, make sure that that's checked. Give it a 
fitting name. Once that's done, you can quit out of Blender. You don't have to save it. So now, go into Scene Setup and we're gonna retrieve our model. Go up to File, Import, 3D Sequence. Find your guy, select the first frame, open. So there's our model, but as you can see, he's tiny. So first we're gonna normalize the size. There he is. First things first, we gotta map him. So we got the body and we got the head. The only one that we're gonna need is his diffuse map. Where we, uh, we're gonna stylize him later and we won't be using the normals or the glossies, just the diffuse. There we go. That's our guy. Nice. Let's quickly check him out. Okay, there he is. Let's place him correctly. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go to World Transform, and we're going to create a null. And this null will allow us to move him in 3D space. So we're going to enlarge him a little bit, and definitely rotate him towards the camera yes okay so let's see what we got that'll do for now once you're happy with the animation it's time to stylize our guy so that he fits better into this uh, blending mode that we're gonna use him on so head back into our comp and let's head back into element so what we can do is actually change a couple of his base settings to get a more cartoony look. There is a great tutorial out there how to create a cell shaded look in Element 3D by, uh, by Video Realm Media. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. He does a whole tutorial on how to create this look. I'm just quickly going to go through his settings. But huge prop to him for this technique because it looks absolutely amazing. So in order to dumb it down, we're going to turn off the physical shader and go for a standard shader. Uh, we turn the bump and the specular maps off. And we're going to bring diffuse down. Let's do all the way. Shut them off completely. Now we're just left with like this dark figure this dark silhouette. So now we're going to go to illumination, turn this to white, do it for both the head and the body or any other body parts that you have. And we check on use diffuse color and just start bringing it back up. This is how we light this character the right way. Uh, probably 20, 20 will be good. You don't want it too bright. Do the same for the for the head. Right. Then back up right here to specular and we are going to turn specular up, set it up to two and then make sure that you do this for all layers because of that saying. Put sharpness at 0.15. Now, if we move him around, we have a really crude, hard light. So that's it for the lighting. Hold, sh hold shift, right click to change, so you can, so you can see how it looks. This is, yeah. So this is the the very easy way of getting something cell shaded. But that's not all. So next, you right click the floating model and you click duplicate all. Then you move down to the second one, and for this one, we're just gonna quickly. Make it completely black. Make sure you turn off the specular map so we just get a black frame. Next, we're gonna unlock the scale of the model and we're just gonna play around with one or two of these scales, leave the other ones intact. Make sure that you don't go beyond 0.2 or 0.1, just incremental changes to make sure that it stays on the character. 
This will work for me. This will work for now. Okay, so let's blend him into the tree. Change the blending mode to lighten. And go over to effects and type in CC glass. For the surface, you want to get the bottom layer. So you want these values to be pretty low because it's animated. And so if it's too sharp, it won't look right. So toy around with the height displacement uh, and light height to get something that suits your particular shot. Drop down to shading, turn off specular, won't be needing it. Nice, okay, so that's a good start. Now, we're gonna add a track mat to this. So we're gonna duplicate the actual background. Let's just quickly change this, because it's confusing. Let's call this Duplicate the background, put it on top, call it track mat, and shut it off. Now, make sure that you toggle the right mode and then put track mat on. Switch to luma mat, go to curves. And now we need to create a hard edge. There you go. And now we want the shadows to disappear and we want the highlights to remain. This almost works. I'm gonna leave a little bit in the shadow because else too much is lost. This is a pretty good result, I'll take it. So now I think the overall design is a little bit dark. It's a little bit hard to see. So now let's go back to Astronaut and in the CC glass, we increase the intensity a little bit. The next step is to actually blend him with the colors. So drop another curves on the Astronaut, switch over to the red RGB, go through all three channels Okay, so let's quickly see what we got. Definitely better, but again, a little bit darker. So, what if? Very nice. Nice, that blends really well. So next, let's change up his lighting a little bit. So go back into our comp and let's go down to the render settings, pull up the lighting and let's see if we can get something that matches the scene a little bit better. So there's as you can see, there's like one little beam of air coming down here and the rest is kind of in the shade. So we're gonna see if we can kind of mimic that. I like this. Use the rotation buttons to, uh, to get an angle that matches your shot. Something like this perhaps. And so let's amplify it a little bit. So one final thing we can do is we can actually mask some of his edges so that he uh, he blends more with the shade. So grab your background, duplicate it, put it on top, and just simply and let's feather it out a little bit. 
and make sure that you're on the first frame and then track the mask. Okay, nice. Let's see what we got. And with that final step, we've reached the end of this tutorial. Nice. And the beauty of this effect is you can apply this to any surface, any piece of ground that you find, and it will have a completely different but very nice blending effect. All right, until the next time.